Very good. Good evening and welcome to the Belmont Planning Board's uh, Zoning Forum on the McLean Zone 3 Overlay District Zoning Bylaw Amendment, which I will not repeat again for the rest of the evening. This, is, this forum is in, intended as an information system, primarily for town meeting members, but also for the members of the town of Belmont at large uh, to uh, tell you about the zoning amendment that we uh, are going to be voting on uh, under Warren Article 9 at this upcoming uh, spring town meeting. Uh, what I'd like to do is start with about a 15 minute presentation to go over what we're, we're, we've been working on and then open the floor to questions. Uh, that's as simple as that. Um, with that, I'm gonna put myself on share screen and open the slideshow and we go from here. The proposed zoning bylaw amendment contains a comprehensive Did set of standards. Yes. Your Jeffrey, screen is not you? shared. Your screen's not shared yet. It wants to be. Sorry about that. Let me go back in and figure out what happened. There it is. Okay, very good. Sorry about that. Hopefully we can move along here. There we go. We'll start over. The proposed zoning bylaw amendment that we're about to talk about contains a comprehensive set of standards and guidelines to realize a new vision for development of the McLean Zone 3 Senior Living District. It embodies nearly two years of collaborative effort by numerous Belmont boards and committees. We'll talk about those in a bit. Town and state agencies, abutters of Zone 3, interested local citizens, McLean Hospital Executives, and Northland Residential Corporation. It represents a compromise among multiple contributing interests that offers clear benefits for all interested parties and for the town of Belmont as a whole. We're looking forward to going through this with you. Just a bit of history, for those of you who may not remember the last century, uh, way back in 1996, the town of Belmont and McLean Hospital created a joint land use task force to develop a mutually beneficial plan for use of McLean Hospital grounds. Three years later in 1999, that's a lot of work in three years, the task force produced a memorandum of agreement, MOIA, which included among other things uh, relevant to this discussion, the McLean District Zoning Bylaw Section 6A and a separate traffic monitoring and mitigation agreement, the TMMA between the select board and McLean Hospital. Town meeting approved the MOA by two thirds majority in 1999. And there was a townwide referendum that ratified the MOA by a 70% vote. So this was a, a broad community effort that resulted in broad community support. The McLean Hospital development zone was basically divided into six enterprise zones, including zone five, which is McLean Hospital, uh, and uh, basically three or four, if you count one A and B as two, uh, residential areas, as well as a research and development area. What we're interested in talking about tonight is zone three, which was scheduled for uh, development of a 480 or up to 486 unit continuing care retirement community or CCRC. Here's a map of the uh, zones. Uh, McLean Hospital is zone five is in white. Um, zone eight, I'm sorry, uh, with zones one A, B, and two and six are colored in blue. Those have already been developed. Zone four is an R&D uh, enterprise area. And what we're interested in is zone three, which is about a 13 acre site. It was originally zoned to accommodate a cluster of seven six story buildings containing up to 486 units for independent and assisted senior living memory care and nursing care. It was a comprehensive facility. It was located on a 13 acre site overlooking Waverly Square to the south. It was accessed and still is accessed by a Olmstead Drive, uh, which is an existing private roadway from a signalized intersection at South Pleasant Street. And the utilities that are already in place include water, sewer, drainage, gas, and electric, full service to that complex and for zone four. Here's what the approved McLean Zone 3 site plan looked like. It was called Freedom Commons at Belmont Hill. You can see that it's a very dense cluster of buildings in that sort of kidney-shaped Zone 3. Uh, again, six stories, 
seven buildings. The original zone three plan collapsed with the bankruptcy of the initial developer and subsequent lack of market interest. In 2018, after nearly 20 years without further progress, McLean turned to Northland Residential to help create a similar vision uh, to, to the zones, uh, to the woodland zones uh, for zone three. Northland drew up a conceptual plan for a senior directed condominium community of 40 townhouses, very similar to zones 1A, 1B, uh, 1A, 1B, and two, uh, and two four-story flats buildings. McLean and Northland then approached the town about making zoning changes to accommodate the concept and the planning board opened public hearings to consider it on January 15th, 2019. This is what the initial Northland proposal looked like. You can see that it's far less dense than what was uh, proposed before. You see the townhouse units clustered around then two uh, apartment buildings uh, over on the, um, on the right. It fit this, this footprint. It's quite a contrast between the two. This is much less dense. We go back to it again. The hearings awakened com 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 competing interests when it was brought to, to the planning board. Um, I, I correct that. They were strong competing interests. The planning board quickly realized that we were not going to be able to forge a, a consensus among all of these interests and develop a comprehensive uh, zoning amendment to bring to town meeting in the spring of 2019 uh, in time. There was no way that we were going to come up with something that would pass town meeting by two thirds majority. And so we uh, ended the public hearings uh, right, it, right around March um, and moved on to other matters. Afterwards, after further negotiations with town administrator Patrice Garvin and leaders of the housing trust, uh, particularly uh, Rachel Heller and, and Betsy, um, uh, Betsy Lipson um, and Glenn Clancy was involved in those as well as I recall, McLean and Northland returned with a new friendly 40B housing proposal on December 3rd, that's to the planning board, uh, to December, on December 3rd, 2019. A friendly 40B proposal is basically a, a house, an affordable housing proposal that is friendly to town interests. It, it's not a hostile uh, uh, intrusion on plan zoning, uh, on town zoning or, or town uh, facilities. It's basically working, uh, an offer to work with the town to develop a, an affordable housing unit complex. The revised proposal retained the 40 townhouses, but replaced the condominium flats with 110 multifamily rental apartments and added more affordable housing units. Starting in January 2020, the planning board held 18 public meetings. 13 of those were public hearings and five were working group sessions to discuss and draft a new zoning overlay article. The planning board consulted a land use planner to conform, confirm uh, unfavorable market conditions to the, for CCRC facilities. We were concerned that we were abandoning something that might uh, be viable and we confirmed that it was not. The select board engaged consultants also to review the traffic projections for agreement with the separate TMMA. That was an important component of, of this whole thing because we had to make sure that whatever we planned would meet the, the uh, specifications of the, of the TMMA, the, the uh, transportation um, uh, monitoring and, mon and mitigation agreement. The proposed section B McLean district zone three overlay district bylaw, oh, I did repeat it, will serve as an overlay to the senior living sub district uh, of uh, the section uh, 6A McLean district. And I've gotten some things out of order here. Uh, dimensional and other basic zoning requirements for the new uh, 6B are consistent with the rest of, of the zoning bylaw. Uh, use allowances were adjusted to balance age restricted and non age restricted units to comport with the separate TMMA. The select board housing trust historic district commission energy committee land management committee department of community development and the fire department all made significant contributions to ensure compatibility with the town of Belmont's interests. The bylaw includes zoning standards and requirements, as well as design guidelines to be enforced during design and site plan review. Standards and requirements are basically the shall clauses. Um, examples might be um, maximum number of dwelling un units shall be 110. Um, uh, no uh, dwelling unit shall exceed uh, 2,400 square feet of living area, exclusive of basement. Uh, no townhouse dwelling unit shall consist of more than three bedrooms. Um, in the apartment buildings, bicycle parking shall be provided at the ratio 
of one half space per unit. Uh, these are the, the things that, that the, the developer must do, and they're very standard sort of zoning, uh, dimensional, and use uh, requirements. We also have an extensive list of design guidelines um, going into building size, scale, and materials. These are the shoulds. So if, if, if the standards and requirements of the shells, these are the shoulds. Uh, the building should be LEED cert silver uh, certifiable. Buildings, the site plan should be designed to enhance the pedestrian environment. Uh, predominant wall finishes should be compatible with the existing historic architecture and other structures at McLean. Uh, the size and detailing of buildings should be designed to reduce the visual perception of bulk and mass. These are not things that you can, you can uh, stipulate specifically because you don't have a plan. Uh, what you have is a concept. And we, what we do is wait and have a second go at this when we go through the design and site plan review to, and we've gotten an extensive list of, of, of guidelines for us to, to follow on that. This zoning bylaw amendment is 19 pages long. That's a long amendment. The, the, the original uh, 6A amendment for the entire McLean district was 13 pages. So we've done an extensive job um, and it's just too complicated to bring out in this meeting, but, but it's, it's there and you're welcome to read it. The bare bones uh, sort of synopsis is that we are looking at dividing the zone three subdistrict into two sub subdistricts, subdistrict A, which are 40 townhouses and subdistrict B, which consists of 110 apartments and two buildings. Uh, the bedrooms in subdistrict A up to three, uh, ownership is for sale, parking spaces, two spaces per unit, 80 total, affordable units, 15% or six units at 80% AMI area median income. Uh, 40 units will require 55 uh, plus uh, age uh, as the head of household. Uh, in the subdistrict B, there will be studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom uh, rental apartments, uh, 1.4 garage spaces, 140, uh, 54 total. I'm sorry. 25% uh, of the units will be uh, will be affordable. 57 units will be non-age restricted, and 53 units will be age restricted. The visual mass of this townhouse is going to be con considerably less than the uh, six-story seven unit, uh, six-story seven building complex that was originally envisioned. These are what the visual impacts are, are going to be, and essentially, and, and, the, and the, the key here is that the visual mass will be far less uh, obnoxious, if, if, you, if you'll pardon me. The townhouses with gabled roofs, similar to the woodlands, will reduce the appearance of bulk view from below. Apartment buildings oriented perpendicular to the slope will visualize visual exposure, will minimize visual exposure to Waverly Square and beyond. Underground parking for the apartment buildings will reduce overall building height. Landscape buffers and neutral building material tones will soften views from surrounding areas. These are all of the characteristics that we'll be working on during design and site plan review. Here we are again. This is the, uh, the conceptual plan now for the revised um, um, zone three development. You can see the different buildings. The smaller buildings are the townhouses and the two large buildings are the apartment uh, buildings. Again, as a reminder, this is what it would have looked like had it been developed. Just imagine that six stories poking up above Waverly Square compared to this much less obtrusive plan. Environmental impacts, the proposed zoning bylaw will encourage lead uh, silver certifiable sustainable design, accommodations for electric vehicles and solar roof panels, landscaping with non-invasive native plants and pesticide free maintenance, water retentive site design and minimization of turf areas to reduce irrigation requirements and retention and protection of existing healthy viable trees. It's a wooded area right now and there will be quite a buffer of conservation land around this development. Housing impacts, basically the proposed friendly B project will boost Belmont's SHI percentage by 1.1%. That increases our total to 7.8%. And remember our requirement and our goal is 10% uh, affordable housing in Belmont. Um, there, of the new affordable units, um, uh, the, uh, there will be 80% will be, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 28 will be 80% AMI and six will be 50% AMI. Uh, this, due to the quirks of the 40B counting system, the subsidized housing inventory will give us uh, 
116 eligible units. It follows the de deed, and the deed for the apartment buildings is 110, and then six of the uh, townhouse units separately, which are separately deeded, will also be uh, affordable. It will also increase our senior housing opportunities. There would be uh, uh, a total of 93 uh, new uh, 55 plus age restricted units. And this is the, basically the, uh, the householder would have to be age restricted, um, uh, spouse and children, spouse, domestic partners, excuse me, and children uh, could conceivably be uh, less than 55. Traffic impacts. The estimated traffic is expected to meet TMMA limits allowed, and again, this, these were developed some time ago, but they're quite conservative, uh, allowed trips daily. The key statistic was the number of uh, morning peak hour trips at 36, and we, the current design uh, is at, expected to meet that. Post occupancy traffic will be monitored and mitigated as needed to confirm comportment with allowed limits. And finally, the Select Board commissioned a demographic study to help estimate annual revenues and costs. This was not part of the Planning Board's mission, but it's something that the Select Board and Town Administrator and Community Development and the Town, in fact, uh, was, was very interested in learning uh, what the, um, the annual revenues and costs would be from this project. What, what, would, the, what would the financial burden be to Belmont? Um, in this, I'm, I'm giving you a simplified version. Uh, there are more complex, complicated uh, uh, spreadsheets uh, available on our uh, website, on the Planning Board's website. But the average tax fees, tax and revenues over the first 15 years would be approximately $1.4 million per year. This is not a big money maker, but it is self-sustaining in the sense that the police, senior services, and education costs are expected to be something around in, in the area of seven, about half that amount, so 700,000. And bear in mind that public works costs, snow removal, trash pickup, road maintenance will be privately funded. This is a, a development on a private land. The road is a private road. Um, it, it does not uh, have an impact on our public works costs in that sense. Uh, construction fees in the early years will be about a million dollars and the bonding capacity is estimated at $25 uh, million. And that's basically our presentation. Um, for those of you who want detailed information, uh, you can contact Jeffrey Wheeler, uh, senior planner at, at his email address uh, at Belmont Mass Gov. And additional information can be found online at the, on the planning board website. I'm gonna come back off of this and join you again. Hi, hi there. Hello. Welcome. So uh, right now, I'd like to open it up to questions. We're primarily interested in, in questions. We know that a lot of people may have comments and I would just, we would welcome those comments, but would ask you to hold them to under three minutes. This isn't town meeting. We're not gonna vote on anything. So we're not here to persuade uh, per se. We're here to get information. So uh, I see Ed Pend Pendergrass has his hand up. I'll start with him. And then we'll move to Roger Rubel and Michael McNamara in that order. Mr. Pendergast. Can you talk a little bit more about uh, traffic mitigation? We're in Woodlands too. And right. so we're looking across the street seeing all this traffic. Where will it uh, feed out to? It'll feed out to South Pleasant Street via Old Olmsted Drive. It won't go, it, it can't be, by, the traffic flow into McLean is, is completely restricted, restricted, as you know, from that side. Um, and so this would all come out through Olmstead Drive, in and out. So basically it'll skirt zone two, uh, I, I assume to your, well, you know, to, to the east um, and, and go into the parking structures there. It won't have much of an impact in, on much of the rest of the woodlands. Thank you. You're welcome. Roger Rubel. Roger, are you there? Okay, hi, now? Roger. Yeah, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So just one note is uh, in your presentation, it sounded like you were saying that Olmstead Drive is signalized at Pleasant Street. It will be. 
It's part oh, of the project. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, oh, you're right. I, I should have said it will be. Will be, okay. Good point, um, good catch, thanks. Okay, so my, um, uh, my question has to do with the design guidelines. You have accommodation for solar roof panels and then you have that the buildings should look like the buildings at the woodlands. So are those things in conflict? No, not necessarily. The, the, the point of having these, uh, thank you, that's a good question. Um, and, it, and it brings up the difference between standards and, and requirements and, um, and, and guidelines. Um, basically what the guidelines allow us to do is balance these interests. Um, and so they're not mutually exclusive. It allows us to try to find a, a, a common ground between uh, uh, having, and I know that your interest is in gabled roofs that, that might accommodate solar panels versus other, right. other kind of roofing. And it allows us to look at different options for that and, 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 and find a balance between the two. Um, so it gives us a tool that we can use to find compromises. Very good, thank you. Yep, thank you for the question. Michael McNamara. Michael, are you there? Thank you, sorry. Um, Michael McNamara, town meeting member. Whoops. Can you hear me? Now I can, yes. Okay, sorry. Uh, Michael McNamara, town meeting member, precinct seven. Um, I just wanted to ask you a question uh, specifically about the, um, uh, the, the, the percentage of affordable housing we have. Um, am I correct in, in thinking that we, that we don't meet the 10% just yet, the 10% threshold that we're trying to ideally achieve um, in Belmont for affordable housing? Um, actually, we need it as soon as we can. We need it yesterday. Um, sure. But, but yeah. what I mean is right now we're not, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. That's correct. And, and, and this and shows a significant progress toward that goal, but it's, yes. it doesn't help us meet the goal. Yeah. So I it, mean, it, it doesn't meet the goal, but... Uh, Right, so it's, it's getting us partway there, but we're still not there. That's correct. Um, so what I really wanna ask is what is the consequence of being under the 10%? Because I thought I heard that as long as we don't have, as long as we haven't met the threshold, if a developer wanted to come in and said, you know what, I, I'm not, I'm going to do a hostel, um, or not hostel, but, but not get the town's approval to do a 40B project, the town would have very little recourse, correct? That's, that's correct. There are some kinds of recourse, but one of the things that we can do is make progress toward that goal. Thank you for the question. That's a good question because it's an important aspect of what we're encouraging town meeting to do is to vote for this because it helps us, among other things, not only achieve 116 affordable housing units in our SHI uh, and offer affordable housing, but it also shows that we're making progress toward our 10% goal. And, and, and the more we really can do that, the more we can appeal to uh, uh, the state, basically, who's supervising all this and say, look, we're, we're doing our best here. We're really trying. We're making progress. Uh, can you, and they, and they can provide us with what's called a safe harbor, which protects us from hostile development for a certain period of time, depending right. on what's going on. Right. And that, that's essentially the gist of my question, which I appreciate you, you responding to, which is um, it, the, the, if we get 10%, then we have more control over, over the, the sort of the affordable housing but we need to get there. So this is a really important step. Right. And also because of the economic situation, I think it's a very important and big step in the right direction, especially right. because we have a lot of seniors who really could use the affordable housing um, and also just a lot of families which really may be rent burdened. Uh, thank you for taking your time to uh, hear me. Thank you. Very good, Michael. That, those are both, that was an excellent question and a great point that you brought up. Um, Aaron, I'm gonna unmute you. Oh, can you hear me? Uh, I'm Aaron Pickalingas, town meeting member, precinct six. I have two questions. The first is, you said that we will observe the traffic to see if it comports with the requirements or the guide, the limits. Um, what happens if it does not? We will, and for, we will work with the developer to uh, introduce mitigation efforts to make sure that those uh, the traffic numbers go down. So we have the authority to there. Are, there well, not we. Excuse me, uh, the select board because this is an agreement between the select board and, and McLean, uh, we'll, we'll have the responsibility of, of looking at the, the, the traffic uh, monitoring mit mitigation reports um, and work with the developer to, uh, to, to find ways to lower the traffic. So that this is where you, you come up with the possibility of putting in a shuttle bus or um, doing other means to, um, 
to uh, decrease the number of cars coming in and out of the site. Matt Lowry. Uh, yeah, and, and Jeffrey can correct me, but I, I seem to recall reading somewhere where if the traffic exceeds the limits, they, they uh, will be required to close off areas of parking. That's correct. Thank you, Jeff. There are, there are some very prescribed mitigation measures within the Traffic and Monitoring Administration Agreement, such as cutting, cut, uh, reducing the amount of parking available. All right. Thank you, Jeffrey. I have, a, I have a second question, if that's all right. Yes, go ahead, please, Aaron. Uh, my second question is about the, the required half of the bicycle parking space per unit. Is that uh, something that uh, you mentioned the guidelines, bicycle infrastructure or facilities, is putting more bikey parking in than that one of the things we would like to guide them toward that is just not one of the shells? We, we certainly could. Uh, we, we, the, 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 the shells uh, created a floor, um, but we also have provisions in the shoulds that talk about <clears throat> making it more, more bike and bicycle and, and pedestrian friendly. So that we could uh, you know, ask and work with the developer to, to put up more. We just need to kind of put a floor on it so that we've got uh, what we consider to be a, a sufficient amount. Um, one, one thing to bear in mind that this is at the top of a hill, so it's going to take some, some uh, uh, climbers to get there, thinking, thinking of the Tour de France right now. Yeah, the whole, the whole of the town, in my experience, is, is at the top of a hill, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true, true. I used to ride around town, and there were the five calls, so there were five hills in Belmont that in the circuit, so uh, anyway. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aaron. Deb Lockett. Can you hear me? Yes, we're here. Uh, Steve, great, great presentation. Thank you for all of your time and your efforts. I have a couple of points that maybe I'll just raise them all here and you can take them um, after. Um, you say encouraging leads. I didn't hear that that's a requirement. So if you could address that. Um, I'd like to ask you um, about Again, another sort of likely will be pe pe uh, pesticide free kind of landscaping. How likely is that a shall or is that a should? Um, my, I had a question about what happens if the actual traffic is greater than um, anticipated. So thank you, you've answered that already. And then I have a question about the number of students uh, attending the public schools and are we prepared for that kind of um, an increase. Okay, Thanks for, thank you, thank you, Deb. Uh, good question about the difference between the shalls and the shoulds. Um, in, in the case of lead certification, the reason it's not a shall is that that and a couple of other things that are of interest along those lines exceed state building code. And so we can't put into zoning something that that's, exceeds state building code because it, the, the state building code preempts local zoning. Um, um, so we put it in as a, sh as a should, and the developer in this case has, has been very interested in working with us on that. In fact, he's, he's the one who is, is promoting the idea. So this is the advantage, again, of the 40B, friendly 40B approach. Um, uh, so so, so if, if you hear it as a should or a, a likely to be, it's probably something that either can't be put into zoning because it, it's, it comes under uh, zoning, um, excuse me, state code, or because it's just not a zoning uh, concern. It's more a, you know, a preference of, of, of uh, you know, you wouldn't want us to come in and tell you what color you had to paint your house, right? Um, and that's the kind of thing that, that you, you certainly don't want to see that as a shall in the zoning amendment. And, and so that's, it, it, that's the difference between the two. Um, I, I, I'm not prepared to talk about school uh, attendance. Uh, that's not really a planning board concern per se. Um, the select board uh, did commission a, uh, a demographic study. Um, I don't know if somebody from the select board would like to address this issue or, or not. Patrice, if you're in the audience, uh, or uh, Roy, perhaps, if you want to raise your hand and comment, that would be a, a great help. Here's Patrice. Patrice, I'm allowing you in. Patrice, good evening. Patrice? Yep, I'm here. Uh, very good. Did you, you hear me? Deb's question? Yes, we can. We yes, can I did. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Sure. So the, as um, Steve said, the, the select board um, engaged a demographer. It was the 
McKibben's group, it was the demographer who had conducted um, a demographic study on the schools sometime in 2015. We asked him to look out 10 years and in actually up to 2030. And what the demographer determined was at the time of 2025, 23 students um, would uh, be additional students to the school system. And by 2030, there'd be a total of 38 <laughs> additional students. And that's what the demographer study shows for additional school children from that and development. And that's across all grades, is that correct, Patrice? That, that is correct. That, I believe that also includes preschool. Ah, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's right, it was. He did have preschool in there. Yeah. Okay, Deb? The pesticides, Steve? Uh, pesticides. Pesticides are, 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 again, that's that's something that just doesn't go into zoning. Um, I, I'm lumping that in the basket of shoulds. It's something that we would like to see, and I think we can uh, successfully negotiate that. Uh, bear in mind that the design site plan review uh, criteria, uh, we can insist on whatever we want to that's in there and, and make that a, uh, a, a drop dead requirement. I don't think it'll come to that, but, but we do have the authority uh, to, it, it would be, I think, irresponsible if that were the only criterion, obviously, but uh, we do have the authority to enforce these things. Um, Deb, you okay? I had a, uh, well, I want to make sure is, we don't have to belabor it tonight, but maybe when we're at town meeting or something, you could have somebody available to say what the impact of these numbers I would imagine that there are some outlier numbers. You know, it wasn't like some hard number that 23 students would be um, impacting well, the schools yep. only in one way. But I mean, heck, we are we have struggled with our schools. We know that our um, you know school age population is just um, a, a strain, and. Um, I would really like to hear more detail. I tried to look deeper into the documents, saw the demographics, um, but I wasn't really uh, grasping um, more drill down information that I was looking for. And maybe somebody can address that okay. uh, the next time. Uh, well, this evening, what I'd like to do is, is I see Rachel Heller has joined us um, and, and I'm gonna let her jump the queue because I think she probably has something uh, really important to say about this question. Okay, thank you. Rachel? Hi, can you hear Hi, me? Hi, welcome. It's so thank nice to hear from you. Thank you. Great job on the presentation. Um, you. You're welcome. And I just want to say to you, I will um, get to that question, but um, from, you know, from the Housing Trust perspective, having been involved with this for the last couple of years, it really is amazing to see how much this project has changed from something that was really luxury housing um, entirely home ownership to something that really does meet the broader needs of our community um, with much more affordable housing than originally proposed. So a lot of really exciting development here. Um, when it comes to um, uh, school enrollment, I do think it's important to note that we actually, it, it comes up a lot, but we actually as a town cannot make decisions on land use based on a protected class. So our Fair Housing Act does prohibit us from making a decision about housing based on who would live there, in this case being familial status or families with children. Um, also, just to note, um, there was a study done by our regional planning agency last year, MAPC, and they found that there is no correlation between building permits, so actual new homes and school enrollment Rather, there's a handful of communities that are seeing a growth in their school age population. And it's really due to two factors. One being having particularly desirable schools, as is our case here in Belmont, um, or two being a very affordable community. Um, so it's really just a handful of communities around Boston that are facing this. And we could build nothing. We would still see an increase in our um, school age population. In fact, when a lot of people think about building homes only for seniors. Um, one of the reasons being, you know, we'll, we'll be able to contain how many kids get added to the schools. You see more kids moving into the single family home. So one, we can't do it, but two, even if we tried to constrain development for that purpose, we wouldn't actually meet that goal either. Very good, thank you, Rachel. Welcome. Um, let's move on in the line here. Um, 
Patrice, your hand is up. Do you want to comment? Um, she's muted, I think. I don't know. Her hand went down. Her hand went down. Okay, very good. That was left over from before. Uh, next up, uh, just looking at the line here, I see Charles Hammond, uh, uh, Elizabeth Schmidt, uh, Steve Kleonsky. Oh, Anne Marie, I assume that's Anne Marie Mahoney. Um, but I could be wrong. Let's start with Charles Hammond. Charles? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you for joining us. Okay. Um, with a 10-foot uh, setback, with a only a 10-foot setback requirement uh, along the western border of the uh, district, uh, I'm concerned about crowding uh, the uh, the condo units in Zone Three crowding the up and bowl, and which will definitely have an impact on the condo units in the woodlands, which face out on the up and bowl. And do you have any authority to? Uh, for screening purposes or otherwise to push units back a little bit further from the uh, from the border. Jeffrey, do you want to take that one? Yes, um, actually, can you, why don't you bring up the proposed site plan? Can you do that? Uh, okay, hang on a second. Let me, let me get there. Because I think that helps show, yes, but the bottom line is yes, that <clears throat> Two issues, during design and site plan review, the planning board will have ample opportunity to uh, comment, to review, to uh, provide further input, to require uh, additional landscape screening along that zone two uh, border. Um, there actually is a provision now in the bylaw that requires landscaping to be installed prior to construction along that border. Um, so, the, uh, so, the, so as uh, you can uh, see, they really Jeffrey, is, yep, yep. Can, can, I, can I cut in here? Yes. Uh, yes sir. Zone, zone two uh, does not extend be, beyond the uh, border of the up and bowl. The, uh, I guess it's the southern border of the up and bowl, uh, the, but zone three, uh, heads uh, northeast of the <laughs> northeast of zone two, uh, where it faces the Upham Bowl. It's not. It's facing the Upham Bowl subdistrict of the McLean district, and it's, so it's not really uh, opposite uh, zone two. Charles, I see what you're saying. If, if, if I think I've sh I think I've shared the screen, and you're talking about building one essentially, which is sort of catty cornered up at the top. Yes. Uh, looking at Upham Bowl. I see your concern. Uh, this is the kind of thing we would look at in terms of harmony with the neighborhood as we're reviewing it in, in design and site plan review. And, and we'd certainly uh, take, a, take a hard look at that. Okay. Okay, we, we, we wouldn't let something like that go per se. This is, remember this is a schematic drawing per se. This That's, is the actual site plan, so. Right, I understand that. Okay, very good. That's a great question though, thank you. Uh, Matt? Yeah, and I, I would just also, I agree with everything that was said. I'd also observe that the setback requirement for the Freedom Common version was also 10 feet, yeah. uh, although it would be potentially six stories there instead of uh, two or three. Good point. Thank you. Um, let's move to Elizabeth Schmidt. Elizabeth? Elizabeth Schmidt, hello. Okay, I'm gonna move on to uh, Anne Marie. Steve, can you hear me? This is Anne Marie Lambert. I'm sorry. Oh, Lambert. Me... Okay, great. <laughs> Thank sorry you. not to have my last name. I, well, your last name actually showed up earlier on and then it seemed, seemed to bump off. So I'm not sure what's going on. Hi, Emory. Hey, so I had two questions. One was just um, to confirm that any experience we've had with the Royal Belmont has been reflected in the town's studies. I guess that would be more of a board than a planning board, uh, you know, board of selectmen than a planning board, but the demographic, but I'm interested like in the town expenses 
Um, if we've learned anything about our assumptions about the town expenses, have they proven true in, in the Royal Belmont experience? Um, I see Patrice is up again. Thank you. I'll defer to her. Thank you, Emory. Patrice, you're up. Yep, thank you. So the demographer study, we had asked the demographer to look at the Royal Belmont and Cushing uh, Square developments when he was doing his analysis and putting in his assumptions um, to reflect some of the numbers that we received from the study. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. And then the second question, Stephen, is, um, is there any kind of uh, common area for this number of units that is proposed or stipulated either? And, and I, I was just curious, because I'm not familiar with the woodlands, whether there is a common area there for residents to gather or whether that, you know, they would be like residents of single family homes throughout Belmont, you know, uh, looking throughout the town for, you know, a, a place for a meeting or what have you. Right. Um, they, they're, for the, for the, that may, I don't know yet. It's, it's a bit early to tell. There's a proposed uh, community building uh, on the site of the, um, uh, of the apartment uh, complex that would be open to the residents of the townhouses as well as the, um, the swimming pool. So, so the answer is yes, but again, this is a schematic plan. Uh, I also bear in mind that this is surrounded by uh, a really lovely public open space. So there's, there's at least uh, access to the outdoors, but I see what you're saying. You're looking for a common a community center of some kind and that, that's what the community building could, could be. Right, thank you. Um, I see Steve Kleonsky's hand up. Steve, uh, I'm gonna open you up. Steve Yes, am I? Yes. Yes, you are. You're live. Thank you so much, Steve, and the rest of the planning board and Jeff for all the hard work you put into this. It's uh, really extraordinary. And I think you've come up with a, a great um, initial plan. Uh, I was just wondering about the uh, timeline, um, assuming, which I hope the town meeting uh, approves this later in the month. Uh, then there's a design and site plan review. Um, do you have any estimate about how long you think that the planning board would take for that? And when does the developer really uh, think that they may uh, initiate construction, I guess is the other thing. It's a good question. Jeffrey, should we defer that to? Uh... Well, but you can, you know, so if town meeting approves the bylaw on September 23rd, it does have to ultimately be approved by the attorney general. The attorney general has 90 days. So that brings you about three months. So now you're talking December. So just say for argument's sake, we hear January, mid January that we've been, the bylaw has been approved. Then you begin the public hearing process of design site plan review. Well, wait a minute. Then you begin the process of actually designing the, the site, which I, well, I would imagine the developer has not true. invested in until well, so that's right. So right. There's, a, there's another three months in there somewhere. At least, right. Potentially, yeah. So then that gives you to, you know, March. And so, and then design site plan view process. I mean, you're probably, I mean, you're probably not talking summer, summer, spring, mm -hmm. um, summer, fall. You summer could, fall. yeah. You know, if you did, you, you could further that with um, um, Jack's on the, on as well. <coughs> Where's Jack? Oh, I see him. He just raised his hand. Mr. Dolly, you're on. Good evening, Make everyone. Make sure you're unmuted. Good evening, everyone. This is Jack Dolly from Northland Residential. Um, I think both uh, Jeffrey and Steve uh, began to sketch out the timeline well. Um, sort of guerrilla calendar arithmetic if town meeting. Uh, ratifies this bylaw on a vote um, on the 23rd. Um, it will go to the attorney general several weeks later from the town clerk's office and start a attorney general's review for approximately 90 days. My mindset uh, is that we would begin the actual design work on an application uh, during the eternal attorney general review period. Um, so we begin that work sometime in October. 
in order to have ourselves in a position to apply uh, for design and site plan uh, approval sometime in January. I would guess it's mid to late or early February. And uh, based upon experience, I think it's a good solid five to six month public hearing process to really uh, go through all of the design guideline details that the planning board has worked so hard on, um, as well as the shalls, um, to render a good solid permit, which I would expect that could be accomplished by late second quarter, uh, maybe very early third quarter of next year, which would put me in a position to close and capitalize the deal uh, for construction uh, sometime in the September, October, time frame of next year thank that, you that's Jack. assuming that's... that you know there are no appeals um, <laughs> uh, or the attorney general finds a flaw in what everyone has worked so hard to create right thank you for that <clears throat> steve does that answer your question he's needed uh sorry i got him Yes, th thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay, very good. Thanks for the question. <clears throat> That's the end of the line, as far as I can tell. No other questions coming in, everybody? It'll be an early evening. I got all that adrenaline worked up. Oh. Oh. Michael Widmer. Mr. Widmer. Yes, thank you, Steve. Very helpful presentation. I just wanted to uh, say to town meeting members that this will be the first item of business on the 23rd of September, uh, the Wednesday evening. We'll try to do uh, seven or eight of the um, less controversial articles or fewer of them in any case, one or two will be controversial perhaps, on the first night and then turn to McLean for the first item on the 23rd and then we'll see how long that takes uh, and we'll do civil service either on the, the 30th or continuing on the 23rd. So thank you. Thank you, Michael. That's I, that's appreciated. I, I, I wanted. I wasn't confirmed. Didn't know if we had actually confirmed finally that we were going to appear on the Wednesday, which so I didn't mention it before. But that's good to know. I saw Bonnie hand Bonnie Friedman's hand up. Uh, Bonnie, you're free to talk. Thanks, um, Bonnie Friedman, town meeting member, precinct three. Um, was transportation a shall or should or um, I know it was originally discussed. Um, it would be really lovely. We really could use cross town transportation. <laughs> Royal right. Belmont has mm -hmm. a shuttle just to like the center of town, but it doesn't, nobody else can use it and it doesn't help them people get to other parts of town. Um, I was hoping to hear a little bit more about that. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, uh, Bonnie. Transportation is actually part of a separate agreement between McLean, as I mentioned earlier, McLean and, um, uh, and, and the Board of Selectmen. Um, and so anything that would happen under that would be a, a select board matter. I'm not trying to kick the can down the road. It's just that it's not, uh, we're not part, that's not the contract that we have. Um, we're, we're basically not responsible. Matt, would you like to do a better answer than me? Thank you. Uh, no, uh, I'd uh, <laughs> supplement your answer. Supplement, uh, thank you. Very, very yeah. tactfully put. So the the draft uh, bylaw makes provision that allows for shuttle bus, uh, for example, transportation, which we needed to do because of the existing uh, underlying bylaw, and um, uh, but it doesn't require it. I think the thought is that uh, the various constituencies, whether it's Zone Three or one, zone 1A and 1B, they may end up getting together and having an agreement uh, to have a shuttle bus and they would need to provide how it gets paid for and all that stuff. Uh, Royal Oak obviously wasn't required to do a shuttle bus because they were a, a uh, unfriendly 40B and, and Belmont had no input whatsoever, but they did arrive at a shuttle, shuttle bus and, and that uh, may happen up, up at McLean too. 
That's great, great answer. Basically, this is a, a private development on private land, so it's not a, a sort of a public uh, project in that sense. And uh, and and they would be the ones that would have to pay for the shuttle service in some way, um, un unless we can work something out. Um, there there are other options. For example, the Belder bus can can make arrangements to, to visit up that way and other things. So this is a, 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 a to be continued kind of conversation, but not for the zoning amendment. This will be something that will occur later. Uh, is that, that a, how's that, Bonnie, you okay? Um, pretty good. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, it could be better. It could it be could, better. We're, we're doing the best we're we can. We're going to try to make them provide transportation. We could try, but you know what? I don't want to scare them away, frankly. And, uh, and it's something that really isn't a planning board uh, under our purview right now. So thank you. Uh, Thanks. I think I've got two new uh, ones. Roger, I see your hand there, but I see Emily Peterson and then Sue Bass is there. I'm going to open it up to Emily Peterson, please. Hi, uh, thank you for your presentation and your hard work on this project. Uh, I think it looks really great and um, Safe Harbor. Sorry, I'm town meeting member precinct one. <laughs> um, the Safe Harbor and um, unfriendly 40 bees has been brought up a couple of times and I plan to ask this in town meeting but I know how long the line can get so maybe you guys can comment on it do you know if the select board plans to apply for safe harbor if town meeting passes this um, amendment or maybe someone on the line can comment on that it would be good to know that uh, whether that was is the intention of the select board and whether we feel that we can achieve that uh, once this we show good faith in our housing production plan. I'm going to defer this one to Patrice if she's still on the line. Um, that's 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 really a question for the select board. There's Patrice. Hi. Hi Patrice. Um, hi. So thank you for the question. So currently um, we would not uh, be eligible for safe harbor. Um, we would then, um, we still need to see some other um, housing um, come online. Currently, our number doesn't include Cushing Square, so we would have to see what that number um, does for the, for the total. There is this project, and then there is a proposed project up on Beecher Circle, which is still under mass housing review. So whether or not we meet the mass housing safe harbor uh, status, we would have to review it. Um, I will tell you that there is an effort between myself and and the planning uh, department to currently just uh, frequently review our safe harbor status. So we will be in a position where we'll know it and we'll know whether or not we can apply for it in the future. Okay, so we have to have, sorry, we have to have the units already built in order to apply. They can't be like in production. Um, yes, yeah, so there's been some um, discussion exactly when um, that happens and when that occurs, whether or not it's when there's an occupancy permit given versus um, when the development gets a site plan review. So we're currently um, looking into that. But Is I will just a, let you uh, uh, go ahead, Matt. I, I thought that there was a at least a one year exclusion or exemption you can apply for. That's the safe harbor. That, that's what the safe harbor is. No, no, I thought you could submit a plan showing that you were you were progressing towards the safe harbor. That's the housing production plan, which the housing trust has already done. So we've, we've made it. We've made a step in that direction. But uh, I guess um, just a recommendation for the presentation to town meeting that you might include that a sentence about it to save some time on questions. I think there'll okay. be a lot of them. Thank good, you. Good point. And I should have made it clear that the, the number that I gave you, the 7.8% assumes that Cushing uh, Village is online. It's, it's, it's uh, aspirational uh, as far as that goes. And perhaps a little more talk over on that slide would be in order. Thank you very much, Ellen. Um, Thank you. Let's, let's see, uh, next up, uh, Emily, we just talked to um, Sue Bass. Let me try to unmute you. There we go. Nope. Sue, are you there? Uh, Sue Bass. Can you hear me now? I keep saying. No, we, now we can. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for the planning board. 
Um, this proposal has a lot to recommend it, uh, but I think we should talk a little bit about the shuttle bus. Now, I thought you were going to pick that up in site plan review. Is that not correct? Uh, we did not put it under site plan review. Again, I think as, as, as we concluded at, 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 at uh, several meetings ago, that basically this is something that doesn't really come up until the, the project is constructed. It's not something that, that we, we can negotiate with the people who don't live in the building yet. Um, it would have to be something that would be part of the, the, uh, the uh, a program for the people who live in these, these structures, not something that we would uh, put out there in advance because they're the ones that have to pay for it. So. The, the idea was that this is something that's future and aspirational, but it's not something that's part of the degree, uh, the, our review of, of a site plan. Well, Steve, that's not really how they do it in other places where they succeed in getting crosstown shuttles and things like that. They, they make it a requirement, uh, just as there are requirements in the traffic mitigation agreement, uh, weak as it is, um, uh, there, there uh, are in, in, dare I say, communities with greater experience of this kind of development, there are hard and fast rules. They make sure that shuttles are provided their requirement of doing the project. Um, yep. in, apart from that, uh, I, I, you know, I, into plenty of the meetings where it was discussed and it was pushed off and pushed off and pushed off. But the town is missing a great opportunity. There are a number of shuttle buses. We talked about, uh, someone mentioned the Royal Belmont has one, um, uh, the, the Belder bus, McLean itself has a shuttle. There are other shuttles that go uh, through parts of town. Um, the way to make this an affordable thing is to combine and and with good service is to combine uh, the various shuttles uh, into into one or two things that really accomplish something um, and so I just do want to express my disappointment um, uh, I heard the selectmen say no absolutely they would not uh, reopen the MOA um, I probably understand why they made that decision, but um, uh, but uh, but I think it was it, it's a mistake to let this opportunity pass by, and we will regret it. Uh, I think I, Sue, if you if you let me interrupt, I think the opportunity is still before us. It's just going to take place in another venue. What venue is that? If you don't have the uh, the muscle of approving or not approving the zoning, what muscle do you have? Very good. Thank you, Sue. The same muscle that led to the Royal Oak shuttle bus. <laughs> right, which was, was again, something that happened after, after the fact, as it were. Well, uh, we will see. Hope for the best. Yep. Um, whose hand's up still now? I saw Roger Rubel for a bit there, and then I think he, he withdrew. Uh, uh, nope, he's back. Roger, I'm going to let you in since you've been waiting. I have a quick question, getting back to Charlie Hammond's uh, question. Does the planning board have the ability to change the setbacks? We've, we've set them already. No, we don't per se. Jeffrey, you want to comment on that? He's asking if we can change the setbacks. Oh, you certainly, during design site plan review, design site plan, we can ask you, you can to, certainly yeah. work with the developer to increase setbacks. You can also reduce setbacks. You have the right, right to... As the planning board, you have the right to waive setbacks. So you have that, that's the whole- um, Thank you. About design side plan review is sitting down and really pulling a plan apart and seeing what works. So the answer is yes, in a sense, but what we've done is established limits. Yes. So we've established floors for these things. It doesn't mean that we can't change them. Yeah, it was just, uh, and Charlie's question was about uh, that building one. So, right, and, and that's something, again, as I said, during design and site plan review, that's something we'll look at very closely. Right, okay, very good. The plan looks like. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bonnie, Anne-Marie, Helen, I'm gonna, Bonnie and, and Anne-Marie, I'm gonna defer you to uh, Helen Bakeman, who hasn't had a chance to talk yet. Helen, good evening. 
Hi, I certainly hope that this is approved by town meeting overwhelmingly. What happens if it isn't approved? Mm -hmm. Very good question. Um, if it isn't approved, first of all, bear in mind that the developer has the option of doing this as an unfriendly 40B. And it will have uh, basically, I'm sure that he, I, I've come to admire and respect him very much. <laughs> And I, I'm sure that he would not do something hostile per se, um, but it is an option that he could pursue. And we then would not have the tool of design and site plan review to fine tune things um, with, with, with that development. The other possibility, the other thing that happens is that it exposes us to increased hostile, hostile 40B activity uh, because we will not have gained, we'd not, we will not have shown progress uh, in, in achieving our goal, uh, we'll, we will have shown an unwillingness to, to go down that road um, and we would be subject to additional hostile 40B projects. That's, that's, that's the stick behind this. Jeffrey, any comments on that? No, I think that's, that's about right. I mean, no one really knows what's gonna happen. The developer has the right to uh, come back with another plan, to try to work with the planning board to come back with a plan that town meeting would accept. Or, you know, there's also that 40B, the unfriendly 40B, that he can throw out this bylaw and say, you know what, I'm done. I'm going to do what I want. Which is essentially what happened at the Royal Belmont. Correct. So, and, and to be clear, it, it doesn't have to be uh, Northland. I mean, it, somebody else could come in with a 40B for that package of property. They would have to yeah. negotiate with, with McLean on it, obviously, because it's, the property is owned by McLean. That's, that's a good point. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Anne Marie, one more time. Uh, just a, a point of fact, if memory serves, then among the 42 conditions for the Royal Belmont was that shuttle that we negotiated. Um, uh, and we could check on that before town meeting, but I believe that that was a may, stipulation that the town- May very well have been, and, and Sue's, Sue's got a good point. And in this case, we've been talking about this for some time and we're not, uh, it's not clear, given the volume and given the location uh, and, and given the abutters and given so many other factors, arriving at a solution to the shuttle bus problem in, in order to get this into a zoning amendment is a whole nother can of worms that would require participation by um, a, a different sets of people. And it's just not something that we need to solve right now. It's something that we can deal with later when there are actual residents on the site. I, and, I and it was, it I understand was understand the stick versus the carrot. No, I understand. I, I just wanted to make sure that the facts were clear about what happened at the Royal Belmont. It wasn't something that happened um, after ground broke. It was before the first shovel went in that that was negotiated. Right. So oh, I understand. It wasn't in the zoning bylaw because it wasn't in the bylaw though. Apply. It was in the 40B terms and conditions, I believe. Right. 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 And, and, that's the, which and that, is which difference. is different than the zoning. I understand. It, right. They were a whole different situation. Yeah, it is. It is. Thank you for that point, though. But it, but it, but it, it's not. This is not really a, a part of zoning law. It's a part of a negotiation that takes place. I mean, I, I know. I know what what you're talking about. But... Thank you. Okay. I think Helen's got another question, possibly, or else her hand's not down. I don't know which. I'll unmute. Helen, do you have another question? No, I don't. I forgot to. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right. Thank you. Ladies. Very good. Excellent questions. All that's wonderful. And, and this helps us as we prepare to go to town meeting. I greatly appreciate the volume. My God, there's 40, 42 attendees here. This is a really quite a remarkable meeting. Um, at, the peak of the question, at the peak, there were 52, by the way. 52? Oh, oh, at the peak. Yeah, excellent. I really miss doing this stuff in person. And so <laughs> uh, I, I, I appreciate people attending uh, on this call. With that, I think, unless uh, Matt, Thayer, Jeffrey, do we have any else, nothing else to add here? We look forward to seeing you all at town meeting. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you. Okay, very good. I think we can close the meeting now, Belmont Media. <laughs>